Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica and I'm super excited to have you join me today because we have a really great intermediate level sublimation project. Now, if you're into sublimation, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because we have a lot of really great sublimation videos. But for today, we are combining multiple sheets and making our very own garden flag. in Silhouette Studio, you know, my favorite software to use for sublimation, but you can do the same thing in a lot of different software. One of my favorite, uh, I guess other favorites to use for this technique is going to be Canva. So if you haven't learned Silhouette Studio, you can check out Canva if you're familiar with that. But um, I think it's super simple and hopefully you guys will be able to easily follow along. Um, first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up the file that we're going to print. So I'm going to zoom out because I know the clip art that I'm bringing in is rather large and we're going to go and set up our page area. You guys know I always try to do that first. My machine will go to none and my mat should go to none and my media size is going to go to letter because I am printing on a letter size sheet of paper today and we'll do portrait. Okay. Now I'm going to go to file and merge. And from here, I'm going to open up this really awesome um, garden flag design. Okay, so let that import. And um, so our garden flags today that we're using are roughly say like 12 and a half to 16 and a half. Um, but a lot of times when you're working with high resolution artwork, you do want to give Silhouette Studio just a chance to kind of adjust. We'll say, you know, it wants to, wants to bring everything in for us. Okay. Now I'm also using an SVG file today. So I will go to file and merge again. And the SVG file that I'm using is this welcome to our home. Now let's go ahead and select that group it together. I'm going to just use control G and so let's center the flag and center the SVG. There we go. So technically that would be fine, but let me just give you a real quick tip because one thing that I love to do, because see how we can, I don't want to call the background dark, but it's not light. Okay. So I'm going to create a small offset and I do mean small. It's going to be 0 0.05. Go ahead and I can just type that in and then I can hit apply group that together. I'm going to fill the offset in with white and change the line color to transparent. And it just helps it to stand out, okay? So then I'm gonna group together my offset and my text, because remember, I'm not gonna cut these, okay? This is, I'm going to print this out. So let's just go ahead and center that back with our flag. And I just think it helps that black text to stand out a little bit more. Now I did choose this design. Um, you know, I'm really into sunflowers. I think sunflowers are great. I think they're great for spring, summer and fall. I think they're very versatile. I mean, you can have them in the winter if you want, but, <laughs> but they are great this time of year, especially. Um, but what I wanted to say is, this is really awesome to personalize with your name as well, all right? Especially if you are in the game of selling, all right? If you sell sublimation items, personalization is absolutely the way to go. But this is a cute example that we're gonna do and of course, just really, really cute. So we're gonna group all this together. And now you notice this is the size of our garden flag file and this is the size of the page that we're gonna print it on. So obviously you can tell that these two do not match up. But one thing that's key, all right, let's go ahead and rotate this. There we go. Now, don't forget if a lot of the things that I'm doing aren't making sense, we have really great tutorials on how to use Silhouette Studio, like a great introduction, and then also how to use Silhouette Studio with sublimation. Then hopefully, um, if you're a beginner with sublimation using Silhouette Studio, then those will really help you out. All right, what I'm going to do, oh, one more thing, let's go back to page setup, and I wanna turn on my show print border. You can see how that actually shows on top of my design here. I know it's not very dark, but it is there. So I'm gonna line this up in the corner, but do you see how I have this little indicator? That is actually the center of my design. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this design where it is on the page because the software will only print what is on the page at that time. Okay, so I can, because I want my design to overlap just a little. 
So I'm going to let it print right here. So that it will only, and this is more of an ink saver. Okay. I could fill up the whole page and then cut off what I don't need, but as an ink saver, I'm going to bring it close to the edge and I'm only going to print the part that I need. And then, um, I'm going to take note of where the page ends. So for now, let me show you what I'm talking about. I hit control P that's a shortcut for print. And if I zoom out, it only picks up that top right corner of my garden flag. So I would print that page and then I can just move it down. Well, let me start over. Do you see how the page stops right here at the bottom part of welcome? So I'm going to move that up. And as long as I can see the majority of welcome on the page and then right here, all right, can you see my crosshairs? A lot of people ask why I use crosshairs. This is another really great reason. You see how my crosshair, it follows my mouse. So if I hold my crosshair right here at the middle of where my design is, you can see that I'm still within the print border area. Okay. So that's the only hard part about this is having the awareness or at least looking for the clues on the screen to show where my print border is going to be. So I know what part of the design that I'm printing. All right. So this would be the middle the right middle. All right. So my page border is right here at the top of this sunflower. So I'm just going to move it over and then I still have my center indicator here. So we would print that again. All right. So there we go. That's just the bottom corner. Now, like I said, these do overlap a little bit. Um, that is what I want. Absolutely. So then I'm going to start the journey over again. All right. I'm going to check out where my middle is here line it up and go ahead and start from this corner. So we would control P. So I will have printed a total of six pages. Now, obviously this is not efficient for your paper, um, but if you have a regular or small format printer, this process works really great. And then I don't have to invest more money in a larger printer until I know that I need the ability to print those large designs on a regular basis. Okay. So we're going to go through that. Here's where my page stops. So let's bring that over. All right. Where's my middle right here? We're still good. So we would print this one. Dun, 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 dun. And then my page border stops here. So we would bring that over. Check my middle. Okay, absolutely. So I've printed a total of six times and now it's time for me to show you how to put all these pages together, the ins and outs of doing so. And then we're going to press it on our garden flag. All right, guys. So here we are. These are all the pages that we printed out of our sublimation design. So what I wanted to show you is you can go ahead and kind of start putting them together, get an idea of how your design is supposed to piece back in place. Okay, so that would be the top. This would be the middle. And then this will be the bottom. Now they don't line up exactly because remember we have overlapping parts. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom and I do have some scissors. And what I'm going to do is I start at the bottom left. It's a process because I only want to trim one and not the other. So the bottom left, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the part of the design that has the white here and here. Okay. On both of these corners. Okay. Now on this one, all I want to do is trim off the top. All right. Now it doesn't matter that I'm cutting part of this off, part of my design off because of the overlaps. Okay. So we take a look. I will be able to overlap this part of the design and line up my pattern. Okay. Do you see how that lines up almost seamlessly? Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to take some heat safe tape. Now this is we, what I'm going to say the more difficult part. Okay. Take some heat safe tape. And I'm going to run this along the back side of this print. So it's just stuck to the back. Now, when I line up my design, 
So then once you have these two attached, now don't tug on it too much because, you know, obviously you do want to keep it in place. Um, but just make sure you can apply heat tape to the front, but just make sure that it doesn't interfere with your print. Okay. So now we're going to overlay these onto these two here. So I don't have to trim the bottom because this part's going to go on top, but on at least this side, I need to trim off the white. So go ahead and grab some more heat tape. And this time it'll be on the back of these. So on this one, you have one on this side and this side, and this one is just down here at the bottom. Okay. So you just start, just pick one. Well, we can go ahead and overlay these first. Now on this, you want to pay the most attention to your text because that's where it'll be the most obvious if your design doesn't line up. And it also helps because I can line up these edges also. Okay, so four sheets down, two to go. So go ahead and give it a turn and we're gonna trim off all the way down. As a matter of fact, to make it easier, you can turn this all the way so that the part you're working with is facing you. Okay, so we know the sunflowers are at the top and this is going to overlay underneath. So I just need to trim one of these. And really you can choose either side. I just try to choose the same side each time. All right, so I have three pieces of heat tape. The easiest thing to remember is to apply the tape to the seams that still have the white because those will be the ones that are underneath. Okay, so we'll start here and I'm just lining up my text right here. You gotta remember your tape is underneath because that's where we put the tape on the paper. All right, applied a little bit more tape there. It wasn't wanting to stick. So once you have the design reassembled, it's now time to go ahead and line up our garden flag. Now remember, it says welcome, but we've turned it upside down. So go ahead and line it up. All right, and center your design the best you can. And then we are going in with this heat tape. So let's see if we can just rotate it a little bit. Because the trickiest part is absolutely turning this over because you need to press it from the back, okay? So what I have are, I don't know if you noticed, but I have my black heat foam underneath there and they come in packs. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my butcher paper, put the foam on top and turn the whole thing over. Now, I won't lie, it makes me nervous. So I usually come in and check and just try to check my edges. Okay, so I believe that we are lined up and what I wanna do is cover it with butcher paper again. And then I'm gonna start the pressing with my easy press. Now I am at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. I'm gonna press a total of four times because this is obviously larger than the press. Um, but when I get done, we should have a completed garden flag. Now I'll say one thing that works really, really well at keeping your design together is a temporary adhesive spray or a repositionable adhesive spray. Um, it's, I usually have two or three bottles laying around and I use it for just about everything. Um, I prefer to use it over the tape, but the tape does seem to be more popular and it's um, more readily found. A lot of vendors and Amazon and things like that sell the heat tape. And of course, obviously, um, you know, if you have a Cricut or anything like that, you can get their heat tape as well. All right, let's see how it turned out. Now, I won't lie, I'm, I'm always nervous, okay? Because, you know, this is not the ideal way to do this, but it is a workaround. It's a good workaround, um, especially, like I said, if you don't have a large format printer. And you should just be able to peel everything off. All right, and the heat tape just falls off. All right, before the reveal, let me move all this out of the way. Dun, da, da, da. Here, I'll turn it this way. There we go. There we go. 
All right, what do you guys think? So I did miss an alignment, one little area right up here, but uh, I won't tell if you don't tell, but I will say that I am really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think that my results are very good. This is a very feasible way to be able to piece together designs uh, for a larger project without having to invest in a large format printer. Um, and I just love garden flags anyway. And like I talked about in the beginning, the sunflowers are really, really gorgeous and they really pop on this garden flag. So I'm happy, hopefully you're happy, and hopefully you are willing to give it a try. So guys, how did you feel about our garden flag? Now, I know it can be intimidating lining up all those pages. I'm not gonna lie, it is not the easiest thing to do in the world. But if you do one of these every three months, you know, is it really worth investing in a large format printer? Now, if you're gonna print all the time, absolutely yes. If budget isn't concerned, absolutely yes. Because a large format printer is something that you'll grow into. But these can be done on smaller format printers and it just takes a little bit more work on your part. Now, if you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing all your thoughts on our projects. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, share with a crafty friend. Uh, this is definitely a video that everybody needs to see because sometimes even if you have a large format printer, there may still be a larger project that you want to piece together. So I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys. But thanks again for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.